And welcome back. Spring is in the air. And here we are with Congrats. We've got KOK, my affectionate nickname for KOK. Yeah. Um, we have a cool, some cool stuff to go over today. And we have a guest today, which is going to be pretty cool. Ashley Cutler is going to join us from AWS, talk about Media Live, which I'm really excited about. We've been uh, anticipating their adoption of HTML overlays in their Media Live service. Um, very, very cool. Like big, big. I mean, we were jumping off the walls, all of us in the singular team. And I know um, a number of our clients have been waiting for it. And um, so we're going to go into that. But first, Catherine, we're going to take a look at what's new in singular today. What we're, uh, sure. And maybe a couple of things about what's coming up. Yeah, it's actually pretty quick this time. Um, we've got some brand new stuff in the marketplace that uh, we think is pretty cool. Um, two new themes. One of them is a quiz show style theme, which I think a lot of us here really like. Yep. Um, and it sort of lets you get a little competitive with your live streams if you want. Um, and then we've also got a new news style theme with some sort of rapid animations. And we've got two new composition scripts for you advanced mm -hmm. artists out there. Um, I think one of them is what we call a call-up code script. So it enables this ability to call up in specific information um, just with some, some keystrokes in your control app, which is, which is pretty cool. And then the yeah. other one is it sort of activates this extra layer of animation um, to your table widgets. So if you're doing a lot of um, tables and spreads, that sort of thing, um, you might want to check that out. So that's it for what's new. It's pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, the marketplace is an ever-changing, evolving um, uh, body of work, we'll call it. So uh, Catherine's done a great job keeping us, uh, you know, trying to get some new things in there and taking feedback from from uh, customers, what works, what doesn't, what new control nodes we may need. Um, so that's a constantly evolving um, challenge for us. But I think we've got some really nice stuff in there and there's more to come. There are always more to come in the market. The marketplace is never done, right? We're constantly working on it. So yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, we have another, I was talking to R&D guys, I think in about I'm going to say, don't hold me to this, but I think with less than a month, we're going to see a new version of Singular. I've had a sneak peek, some nice new features. I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil them. Um, and I know we are actively, just one more thing that I, I wanted to touch on is uh, Studio 2.0. Just a little sneak little thing, i just tell you. I've been testing it. Um, we don't have a release date yet, but it's in the works. Uh, incredibly snappy UI. It's just much more responsive. All of the great features that we already had in Studio 2. Studio 1.0 and uh, 2.0 has some new features. So I can't give you a date now, but I've been talking to the R&D guys and we are actively really helping out the, um, the team to test it. So that's just a little sneak, sneak preview until we get a real date in there. So um, I guess next we just jump over to our Featured guest, we are very, very happy and pleased to welcome Ashley Cutler from AWS. She is the senior um, uh, senior product developer, uh, or senior product, excuse me, senior product manager for uh, Media Live, their new service. And we are extremely excited to say that they now support HTML uh, overlays, animated overlays. Um, which means you can put Singular on top of this AWS uh, streaming service. So um, I guess we just jump right into uh, chatting with Ashley. And there's Ashley. Welcome. <laughs> hey. Hi. We're really happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great to have you. It's really, really, we really appreciate it. No, it's awesome. Um, we have a number of our uh, customers have been asking about Media Live, and as I mentioned earlier, we have the um, you guys have HTML support now, which is just just tremendous for us. Um, I will just say, in general, you know, Singular. Um, I don't know if another, a lot of our customers realize this, but when you set up a new account in Singular, the first thing that happens is we create a S3 bucket, and we put all of our assets in our S3 bucket, which is an Amazon service. Uh, works great, lightning fast. We have no problems on the singular side with it. And then the other piece we use quite heavily, as do a lot of our pro and enterprise customers, is the um, DynamoDB. Um, and 
and a host of other features that I won't go into or services of AWS. So we are big fans of AWS and have had nothing but 100% pure uh, rock solid reliability. Now, without further ado, today we're going to dive into the wizard. I wish I had a little wizard hat, one of those cool little wizard hats. <laughs> The wizard, the wizard <laughs> workflow. Uh, the work next show I will do. We'll have Ashley back on. I will find a wizard. So workflow wizard is a um, a nice. I'll call it a new feature. And Ashley's going to show us how to use the workflow wizard to walk your way through um, making it a little bit easier, a lot easier for customers that are interested in using the um, service, the um, Media Live service. Um, it's because uh, it be, because outside of the wizard, it's a very powerful tool. That, and I'll say about the um, about Media Live. So the wizard really, really helps, and that's what we're going to focus on concentrating on the wizard. And we're going to walk you through those steps. Travis, who we haven't, you know, he's behind the scenes helping us here. I I'm think Travis is going to go behind ahead. the curtain. There, oh, there you are. Um, Come behind the guy. I actually get to be in awesome. This one. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna stay quiet here and enjoy watching Travis go through this thing, and and Ashley's going to uh, help us walk through the steps of the wizard. So, without further ado, have at it, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for inviting me. We are also extremely excited uh, to be able to enable this functionality on Media Live. We also have customers who have said to us, "When can I?" overlay my amazing singular graphics on my media live channels and so yeah. earlier this month uh, we launched that on uh, media live and so we also uh, earlier this year uh, launched something called the workflow wizard so one of the great things about aws is you know we have an incredible array of services right it maybe can be a little bit overwhelming and and for media services we've we've taken a similar approach where we have a number of api or console driven services that you can mix and match together to create uh, the workflow that makes sense for you um, but getting oriented around four or five different services just to set up a live streaming workflow can be a little overwhelming to get started so we have what we've uh, what we call the workflow wizard, which sets up your workflow from beginning to end and can really walk you through a number of choices, like a smaller subset of some of our choices around uh, getting your live stream set up. And so we'll use that today to kind of talk through the demo of how you would you know, set up a media live channel and as well as your up, you know, upstream or potentially downstream um, part of your, your workflow. And then we'll show you how to overlay those graphics. That's great. And of course, we'll be featuring the, the, the great uh, singular graphics today, of course. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yes. Exactly. <laughs> you did such a good job talking about, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to call marketing after this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they've got a great uh, spokesperson in you. So that's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for all the kind words. And we're so excited that you're using AWS and S3 and all these really powerful, scalable, affordable tools. So thanks so much. Yeah, we, um, Travis is now going to die. We're, we're looking at Travis's screen now, and he's going to go ahead and create a channel. Yeah. So, and we're going to walk, walk you through yeah, this. So this, so, is the, this is the Media Live homepage in the AWS console. So you know, Travis is logged in here. So you can go ahead and, and select create a channel. Um, and actually, what we're going to do is if you'll pop over to that left navigation, yeah, there's this new tool called the Workflow Wizard. If you want to click on that. So this is a workflow that has already been created, but I think we're going to walk through a new one, right, from beginning to end, yeah, just to give the, yeah, the, folks a sense of how this works. Exactly. So awesome. Create a new one. Yeah. Give yeah, fantastic. Name. So you nice start off, name. give it a name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call this one workflow two since there's already workflow one. Fantastic. So we do have something called a media live channel class. Um, this is a moment where I can talk a little bit about our backend architecture. So um, we allow you to customize the level of um, you know availability 
um, and resiliency redundancy that you would like for your event. So we have our standard uh, channel class, which is going to have a one-to-one -one, um, redundant configuration. So two encoding pipelines and two inputs uh, to really give you that high availability. They're spread across two availability zones or uh, separate data centers within an AWS region. And so if you really are looking for you know, a high availability workflow, you can select standard. If a single encoding pipeline is good enough for your event, um, they are less expensive and we have a lot of customers use those as well so you can select single pipeline um, you um, we won't go in too much of this but you do need to have your correct permissions set up your IAM role set up make sure that you have permissions uh, to create and and read some of these services so you've already got that set up there there is doc if you're new to that world there is documentation on how to get that set up um, it's pretty straightforward but it is something unique uh, to AWS so something to just sort of be aware when of I first set this up I just clicked on create role from template and this was an option it would an AWS pre-built exactly right. me and it was all very, yeah. very easy yeah, we try, we try to make it as easy as possible in this wizard for folks who are getting started. Maybe it's their first time using AWS or maybe it's their first time using mm -hmm. Media Live. Um, it really provides you a really easy way to get started. All right, so confused. then you're not confused? Okay. I'm not confused. <laughs> All right, nice. Awesome. So we've got um, a four options um, as part of the wizard workflow that we allow you to set up. So we've got Elemental Link. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Elemental Link, it's an HEVC uh, contribution encoder. We like to refer to it as um, you know, your SDI port for Media Live. So it's a really straightforward, affordable device that um, uses the Zixi protocol to reliably transport your live stream into the cloud, um, which is which is great. We have a ton of um, you know customers using this across you know live event workflows. We have you know uh, professional sports teams using this for unique things. So it really is a reliable, affordable um, you know live contribution encoder. Um, so that is something that's available um, if you're interested. We also support you know file based inputs if if that's you know your workflow. Um, we have HLS. We have a variety of inputs, but for this we have also have Media Connect. So Media Connect is our reliable cloud transport service. So if you are using uh, something, for example, something like RIST or SRT, an advanced um, rate control protocol for the cloud, this is a great service to be able to use to reliably, you know, take that feed in and then feed it into Media Live with all of that, you know, um, that same uh, underlying uh, architecture. So um, it's just, it's not required. You know, customers who use that tend to be more on the content owner side, um, folks who are doing distribution. It's really a terrestrial transport service. I think for today, uh, though, we're going to use RTMP. Yeah, we're just going to use a simple RTMP. That's what we got set up. We're just got an RTMP live view unit. And yes, we're right. Sending it from that. Ash, just, just jumping in for a second. Thank you for going over the elemental link and, and, and the um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the the Media Connect and you went over, do, 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 do. yeah, the Elemental Link. So I, as, as you and I discussed uh, earlier in the week, like those are those are AWS terms. So if people aren't familiar with that, but um, I'm glad you touched on those because I think as we mentioned or when we were chatting earlier, uh, RTMP, MP4, I would think that most people who are getting into the streaming or going after the service have a pretty good understanding of those two. But having a good understanding, and you were giving some nice examples of when you would use Media Connect versus um, Elemental Link, Element Link, I'm sorry, I keep saying Elemental, Elemental, Elemental Link, um, is very helpful. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, that's really, that's a nice explanation that you gave of, of one versus the other. And Travis is so going yeah. down into... Now I'm going to scroll down, and then I have to give my input destination a name. This is basically like a server name, so it could just be anything. And this is basically assigning like a stream key, like you would normally on an RTMP push. You need a server name and a stream key. So it could just be gibberish. You would copy, you're gonna copy this. You're gonna copy this later. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're gonna grab our security group. Um, I've already created one. It's basically um, allowing any IP out on the internet 
to send the RTMP signal into our RTMP server. Mm -hmm. And then. Our... Yeah, so for this, this is just letting us know a little bit more details about what your source is going to look like to make sure that we can provision enough uh, compute resources to be able to um, reliably uh, deliver your stream. So you just enter a little bit of information about, you know, what your input is going to look like and then, um, you know, yeah, you have some options if you have HEVC. Um, HEVC is, you know, um, much more efficient, but it takes a lot of more compute. So we, we tend to make sure that you have uh, more computation uh, behind that if you're going to use HEVC. So these these uh, specifications help us make sure that we uh, we give you the right uh, level of horsepower behind it. Got it. Yeah, I know the, the live view, I think, maxes out at six megabits per second output. So yep. 10 yep. So max 10 is perfect. Yeah. All right, now we're on, where do we send this stuff? Exactly. So if you select that, so we have a bunch of pre-built options here for you. So I'll just talk really quickly a little bit. So Media Package is a just-in-time packaging origination live delivery service. So this is really great for customers. If you're doing DRM, if you're doing, um, you know, HLS, Dash, CMAP, um, you're doing a lot of different packages out to a lot of different devices and you want a scalable origination service, Media Package is right for you. Um, Media Store is, um, is you know, a really great uh, reliable origination service um, it has a high read write consistency um, so it, it really gives that really reliable performance for live streaming so if you just want to do straight HLS streaming media store is a great option there as well but then you also see you know those are not required right we have customers do any number of workflows um, those these are just kind of our most common so obviously we have customers who just send directly to Facebook or send you know directly to YouTube or twitch and so these are kind of prepackaged for you um, and so if you select I think for today we're going to select media package yeah Mm -hmm. So you'll see that with media package, normally you'd need to go to the media package console and build your channels there and then hook up media lab and media package together. Through this workflow, we're actually going to create those resources for you on your behalf. If, if you already had an existing one, you could say, I already have one, and then select it from the, um, the drop down there. But then um, in, we built out just some you know, really easy templates, uh, 720p60, 720p30. So depending on your audience, how much you know, high resolution you want to have, you can kind of select um, you know, mix and match here. This is all fully customizable um, in our non-wizard workflow um, in the console. So if you have really specific video requirements, you know, you need to set your GOP settings, for example, um, for those of you who are really, you know, who really get into this stuff, or you have very specific um, uh, requirements that, that you want to make sure that your specifications are, all of that is completely customizable. But this is just really a, a, a nice, easy way to get started. And so um, we've kind of pre-built some of these options to make it easier for you. All right, I think I'm all set. So we're going to do a single 720p30. And then, yeah, you just kind of go through and review everything. everything make sure it looks good. And then good. you can hit create. Yep. This is what I'm it's actually doing. taking some notes here because Travis is amazing. now our guru. Here we go. So, so, so what's happening here is we're actually going through and creating all of these resources in a cloud formation stack. And what's nice about that is that that becomes a template you can use. You can use cloud formation to kind of create templates that can be reused um, in the future or customize those. Um, and it also provides you a really nice, easy way to start and stop your entire workflow with a single button. Um, so we're just going to wait for these things. So these things are going to go ahead and go ahead and complete. Um, and then once it's ready to go, that start workflow will light up and you can start live streaming. I think the first thing you would do once the live input is created, now you actually have a place to send your video. So you can just click link to resource. It takes you yep. right to your input. And there's literally, there's my RTMP destination that I'll be sending the video to. You just copy that, put it in your encoder. 
Did you remember your gibberish name there, Travis? That little D W do do blah whatever that yep. you put in there. <laughs> copy paste was fine. Copy yeah, paste is fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are we? Are, you gonna, are we going to? Were you going to pop over and show the motion graphics now? So I think now we go into the channel and have to turn yep. on the, that feature and set it mm -hmm. all up. So you go to the channel that it's set up for you. Here's our channel. It's called Workflow 2. Yep, that's right. So you need to go to, yep, so you're going to go to the settings. <laughs> yes, now I remember this part. There you go. <laughs> yep, so it should be under general settings there. And there should be a motion graphics configuration. Oh, I always forget to do this. We have to actually go to edit channel to make these changes. Mm. Uh -huh. Is that a permissions thing just to No, to no, make it's sure cuz in most of edit settings you're just looking at the settings. So if you go to edit ah, settings I now see. I can go and edit these. Turn on this feature and hit enable and you're good to go. Yep. And just click update channel. So what that's telling us is that for this channel, um, I'm going to be sending in an HTML source. So I want you to be ready to composite that on my live channel. So we'll build the infrastructure on the back end to be able to do that compositing, um, taking that source in and then layering it over the transcoded video. And then, and then um, yeah, we, we actually use scheduled actions. Um, so our channel schedule allows uh, customers to do a variety of things. Um, you can create a series of schedules to do like input switches. Um, you know, we have customers who will set up, you know, basically do, you know, you know, can set up a live channel with just a series of VOD assets, right? And so they're setting that up for downstream distribution. So. Um, the reason why we chose to use our channel schedule to do motion graphics is that you can actually set up multiple motion graphics URLs if you so choose. So if you have, um, say, you know, you've set up some, uh, you know, halftime content um, with uh, upcoming games, right? And then that is in a different, uh, you know, uh, URL than, you know, your scoreboards, mm -hmm. let's just say. Um, you can actually switch between uh, different URLs. We do. We did have some customers tell us that they needed that capability. So that allows us, you know, rather than sending in a fixed URL that's kind of hard coded into the channel, you can switch that at any time, toggle them on and off, um, bring them in, bring them out, um, and then of course you're doing all the control of the graphics within your authoring tool. Um, so mm -hmm. something like Singular, you know, you're telling. Um, you know, you're using Singular to tell us which graphics you want to show, you know, doing all the fading in, the fading out and bringing those things up and down. Um, but within the media live, you can tell us, you know, you can switch between different uh, graphics URLs. That is a really, really good point. I'm glad you brought that up because uh, as, as um, our team knows and a lot of our users use our, Singular has a, a, an adaptive URL output capability where we can have one composition but it sends out multiple URLs. So some of them might be halftime content or pregame content. Um, so they can manage it all within one composition, control it all from uh, one rundown list. So when you click uh, the halftime content, it only comes out the half, I'll call it the halftime URL versus the main game mm -hmm. URL. Nice. That's a great point. I hadn't, that very, I hadn't really connected that when we talked last time, but this is, that's tremendous. Cause that is definitely something we get from our, our, our pro and enterprise customers for sure. Yeah. Um, that ability to manage two URLs or multiple, more than two. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. So for this case, I'm just going to pick immediate. So as soon as the channel starts, Singular is enabled and on air. So we'll do, and here's all this scheduled action options. There's tons of them. Mm -hmm. And motion graphic. Oh, wow. Um, Duration, you actually set like how long you want this to be active. Leave it blank for. Yep. It Leave it blank just means we'll, it will stay on forever or until a scheduled action says that, you know, you to no longer it want yeah. it. So there's now, two ways. Yeah. So you can put this up to say, 
I want this graphic to play for, you know, this, this duration of time. Um, and then, and then it would, it would come off automatically or, you know, you can just leave it off and then do a scheduled action um, to take it off or to deactivate, you know, those types of things. So there's a lot of ways that you can um, orchestrate this if you so choose. Is there a drop down the there, Travis? What's that? So when you go to that duration, um, that edit field right there, what is the drop down options? I'm just curious. Oh, no, we, okay, like my, numbers, yeah. Can we have one? Yeah. Can we have yeah. one actually maybe just a little request that says, don't turn it off, keep it on the whole time? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that would just leave a we'll blank get, and it's on. Like, oh, well, if it's blank, that means it's never on. <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, it, it is a good point. Um, I think if you click info there, it'll tell you leave it blank if you don't want to set a duration. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we don't read uh, direct. Actually, we don't read direct. Reading. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear I hear I feature request logged. I have put it in in my uh, <laughs> list. Um, noted. I don't know. These little these little info guys on the side are very very helpful. That's how. I was basically able to teach myself by just clicking. You know, I never thought of that as a strategy. I think I'm going to have customers asking me to come on a uh, live broadcast so that they can uh, publicly <laughs> ask me if I can build a feature for them. We can't get to let you off that TV, Ashley, on your first thing with us. I mean, come on. I mean honestly. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, so it's created. We're getting close. We're good. good to go. It should be there. I copied my URL from Singular into that action. So as soon as the channel goes live, Singular will also be live on the channel. And then I believe we just All right, let's go back to fired up. our workflow and start it up. Boom. Actually, we're not starting this one up. That was just to show you how to do it. You're going to show the prepared uh -huh. one. We're going to show this yeah. one since I showed you that stream key. Workflow uh, two. I see. We will not be going live because anyone can send, who's ever watching can send to that input right now. Who knows what we'd see? That could get dangerous. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so this one was all set up with the exact same settings. I went through the exact same steps. So we're just going to start this one up previously. Ooh. Drum roll, please. Here we go. We're going to be drumming for a while. That's starting up a lot of features here. So. While we're waiting for the panel to start up, um, I, I do not have an award uh, behind me. Can, can I learn like more? <laughs> He was pretty I'm proud feeling, of himself that he uh, you know, threw it. <laughs> if I, if I had those life. statues, they would be prominently displayed behind me as well. You know, it's funny. Like normally, I, at all times. normally I have them like stashed in the corner over there, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bust that one out and just kind of put it over my. I have two of them. I got one over here. One over there. I'm surprised you haven't <laughs> put that as a hood ornament on your Oldsmobile. <laughs> what a great <laughs> It's so dramatic. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. so our channel's already up and running. Oh, it is running. So what we're going to do is um, we have all these endpoints we've created. So now we can actually just go and view the video at one of our endpoints um, because, you know, we're streaming out to the world. That's right. This is uh, It's a really eventful point. video that we're streaming to this, too. Oh, it'll be compelling. Don't worry. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Breaking oh, news, right? There it is. Yes, oh, beautiful. Oh, this is parking <laughs> lot. This is parking lot live. I parking heard about this live, channel. Yeah. I heard it. Gets, yeah, it's got like two million viewers right now. The parking lot live with the <laughs> singular uh, ticker. Um, I, I'm going to say, you know, one thing. Just looking, we we just. You know, Catherine asked me, let's let's put a ticker on on air or uh, as our overlay. Um, and it really just shows you the, the the performance. You know, it's just beautifully handled by um, by our friends at AWS that I was um, and we have it updating quite quickly. So, um, yeah, it's the 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 performance 
of the HTML overlays has been, I've been impressed. When Travis showed, it, showed it this to me for the first time, I guess must be three weeks ago, that's the first thing I noticed. I'm wow, it's just really, really clean and um, just no uh, performance hits whatsoever that I've seen. So, And we've started to throw on more and more singular graphics and so far just amazing. This is great. Look at that parking lot. You were, oh, that's some you, stuff. Were, you, were so, you were so kind to provide us really rich, complex, uh, challenging graphics. And so we really tested um, before launching this to make sure that we could really handle, uh, you know, complex graphics coming in and, and create a beautiful image. So th these look great. And isn't it an interesting thing that like, you know, about video that one of the most complex things to deal with is scrolling text, right? Like that, oh. I mean, video, and that's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's just like a, like for those of us who know about video, right? Like that's actually one of the more challenging things to handle in the transcoding space is is those texts. So that's really, you know, critical. It's funny because so many of our customers have these scrolling texts that, that they almost just drive me nuts at this point for so many reasons. The reasons you mentioned just from a performance standpoint, but this one, we just, we call this our rolling ticker. And actually that's that's um, that's live data. So you've got the, the clock, uh, uh, the date and time in the lower left-hand corner, the, the messages are coming in via an RSS feed. Um, actually, it's a, BS, a BBC um, RSS feed going through their various um, RSS feeds. So it's pulling the data, um, we're pushing it into Singular, um, you know, putting it into our HTML overlays, handing it over to our best friends at AWS. And we get this, ready for my new graphic? Watch this. You can see my little, can you see that? That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a graphic for today. See, singular plus AWS Media Live equals the happy guy. That's that. See, right there, that's pretty well, cool. I was actually going to ask, like, do you have a place on your website where I can buy one of those hats? Because that it's pretty great. That's a common request. <laughs> we need, we need to get on that. I, I think you're I missing an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, these yeah. trucker hats are pretty cool, right? So. Since I yeah. gave Ashley a little bit of a, a a little bit of a UI jab there, I think I owe you a hat and probably the rest of your team. So they're on their way. They're on their way. They're on their way. <laughs> For sure. Fantastic. Wow, this is great. So, this is you know, really, really cool. One of the things I'll just call out for anybody who's watching this who maybe wants to to try this out, one of the great things about AWS, right, is it's pay as you go. Um, you do just want to make sure you turn that channel off. Um, so anytime it's in a running state, um, you are going to be, you know, charged for that, which is great. So just, you know, it's great to just don't forget it. <laughs> stop your workflow when <laughs> yeah, you're done. Yeah, don't walk away um, when you are done. Uh, click the stop. Yeah. Pay as you go is, is fantastic and flexible. Um, just just make sure you turn it off. Turn off the lights. Oh, yeah. we. Yeah, exactly. We you mentioned that last time. Like, what happened? Why is it why is it so expensive? Because you didn't turn off the lights. You can't just keep the lights on twenty four seven and get no bill. So it's the same thing. Um, I want to touch on one point, Ashley, that you brought up about redundancy. You know, a lot of customers look at the live streaming space and like, why would I use this service or that service? And redundancy, when you have um, sort of mission critical content that you just cannot afford to have take an interruption, or you want maximum uptime, I'll call it, because as we know, the internet has issues and, and you get some, some um, uh, there's things out of our control, but the redundancy thing is really extremely impressive from you guys. So if you want two levels, three levels, four levels, the sky's the limit. You want to pour some more resources from AWS to make sure that your stream's going to stay live. Um, that's where you get into a really professional service that you guys have. It's the redundancy is such a huge um, piece to this. Uh, a yeah. lot of our customers, I mean, they, pro enterprise, they get nervous, so they need redundancy. And that's you guys offer that in spades. It's incredible. Uh, yeah, so Media Live today is available in 14 of AWS's global regions today. Um, and we have customers who run workflows where they will actually set up two one-to-one redundant channels. And then we have, um, you can actually lock those channels together 
um, across regions. So we, you know, we have customers who are setting up, you know, really global, resilient workflows. Um, you know, can fail over to different regions in the case of events. So there's a lot of scalability, flexibility in how you architect your workflows. Um, but it's also completely fine to set up a sync. You know, we have a highly available service, so we have customers who are in one AWS region and who happily, reliably stream uh, content um, with a with a single. Uh, you know, pipeline as well. So it really just depends on what level of resiliency you're looking for for your workflow. You know, it dawned on me too, just touching on a point that we talked about earlier with the multiple output URLs coming off of one singular composition, the ability to manage um, when those output URLs get displayed in the example of say a, a pregame uh, uh, halftime and postgame graphics with different separate URLs. But that also holds true when you talk about regional content and language-based content. So, for example, exactly. if you're sending out a stream in multiple languages, there's nothing stopping you from building one composition in Singular, doing the language translations, sending it out with AWS's uh, 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 media live services, and boom, you have your graphics in multiple languages in multiple regions. So that's the kind of thing that you get when you go to a, a, a real robust platform like Media Live. So. We're, uh, the floodgates are going to open and we are going to be even busier than we always are. <laughs> and we are very happy, as I've said about 14 times in this stream. So amazing stuff, really, really cool. And the Travis, your parking lot camera, I'm a believer. I think it's the future <laughs> parking lot cam. Parking lot cam, yeah. Parking lot cam. We'll call, it, yeah, we'll call it tailgate TV and we'll go that's, out there and get some uh, hot dogs and hamburgers. And that's what's happening in the city out. right now. That's, that's right. <laughs> great. It's great stuff. So right now, yeah, um, I, I did, did the whole workflow. Oh, sorry, Catherine. Yeah, I just, sorry, I, I was just going to say, I dropped in some stuff in our description. Um, if you guys want to learn more about Media Live, Ashley gave us some links. So um, check those out. Highly recommend. Yeah. Um, I, I dropped. Yeah some links yeah drop some links on you know learning more specifically about this feature we have documentation about how to enable motion graphics but if you're just looking for general information you can just go to uh, aws.amazon.com media live and we're there and you can read all about all of our features and uh, get started well i know we have a number of customers on our end that are either using it and want a lot, uh, are going to be using it more. So uh, we are extremely ecstatic and Travis has been doing some testing. He went through the, uh, you passed the test, right, Travis? The uh, the AWS training test when you went through everything? I did, I did. And you were, you were a, a pro. So very, very just, excited. Just in, just I in time for this stream. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, it was relatively painless. I think the workflow wizard, you guys did a very nice job of taking something that is inherently complex and reducing it down to something that is manageable, that's not overwhelming. Again, there are a few AWS unique uh, terminology that I think we covered nicely in this stream. Again, we have links for more information about um, the service. And um, yeah, we're off to the races. We've had, like I said, we've had no problems on our end whatsoever. Performance rock solid. Um, so. I think I'm going to keep us honest on time and say thank you, Ashley, for having uh, having the time thank for us you. to. That's to, great, and I'm sure we'll have you again. We'll bother you, and uh, maybe with some use cases where we can show people some. Uh, well, I'm going to stick with the parking lot camera. I, I'm a I love it. Yeah, I it's staying great. there forever now. Yeah, we're not going to take it down. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Thanks again, Ashley, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks and um, we will. It was a pleasure. Yeah. So fun to cool. work with you all. And I can't wait to see what our joint customers come up with. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Catherine, back over to you. What do I think we have? Um, we'll let Ashley go, and then we will probably take a few questions, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see if there's some other just singular related stuff that we. That, any viewers out there might want to ask us? Oh, did I did I lose audio? Did I lose Catherine's Catherine audio? Audio, no more. Oh, sorry. I think I muted myself because I have a, a puppy who's who's loud sometimes. Um, we yeah, that's, that's I we can take some questions. That's that's fine. But you know, we can't answer any media live stuff specifically. 
Well, we got. Do we have any questions, Travis? Travis? Um, one question came through with can scheduled actions be created at run time while the channel is running? And uh, oh, that we can answer, right? I think so. Or actually, actually, I don't want to. Your mic is still on. If you want, yeah. Am I here? Yeah, you're still. There. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Pick you up. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is a question I can answer. Um, so, um, okay, why am I? I'm always like, uh, there we go. Now I'm um, it's awkward. Yeah, so yeah. that's actually the beauty of the scheduled action. So you can have a channel running. You can say, now you do need to have motion graphics enabled on that channel. So if the motion graphics hasn't been enabled, like if you have a channel running and, and you haven't set that channel, you need to restart the channel or you, know, you can't uh, dynamically enable it. But as long as motion graphics is enabled on your channel, it can be running. Mm -hmm. And then you can, um, with a scheduled action, just uh, do the graphic overlay. So it doesn't need to be preloaded into the system. In fact, you can start your channel and not have any, not have set up a scheduled action uh, providing that information. So yeah, you can. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't need to be pre-made at all. That's nice. You can do yeah, stuff on cool. the fly. That's really cool. Cool. I'm just looking and glancing over at the. Uh, if there's any other questions that some people might have. Again, we've got some good links in the description um, to, for, for uh, if you really want to dive in deep, when you want to really dive in deep to this service. I think, um, I think that about wraps it up. I think we covered that. This is a nice introduction. And um, again, Ashley, thanks for jumping back in. This was great. We talked to you. <laughs> yeah. <Like anything>. yeah <laughs> exactly. She's, she's in a cloud. You just sort of like. Here, here, here. <laughs> uh, she's awesome. Good she's great. Good Always <laughs> um, yeah, I was about I was about to go grab a sandwich. It's lunchtime here, so you got me just in the nick of time. So I was still here. No, I'm joking. Hats are in the mail. Thanks again, <laughs> Catherine. Thanks for, for keeping us honest and, and setting this up. Travis, great job. And uh, we will be back oh in a couple of weeks i'm not sure maybe a week or two catherine's gonna get us going on a that next might be a little uh, soon, but yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes we're uh, when the floodgates we'll open yeah. they're gonna be more they're gonna be pounding at the gates i'm telling you so um <laughs> they're gonna want more media live and more singular um making some amazing content thank you for joining us travis thanks again and we Got will it. see you next time on uh singular <laughs>